I've always been a pioneer. I love breaking new ground. Everything less is boring. Linda and I wanted to develop as eco-friendly, as carbon-free life as we can. So we decided to create a house of our dreams. We call it O'Harmer's Home. I come from a family of pioneers, long line of pioneers. And my father was a professor in civil engineering. Even in 1970, he warned about climate change and said there's time till perhaps 2000 to start to really change this. During my career, I was a naval architect specialized in Arctic icebreaker design and operations. The alarming observation over 30 years was that most of the Arctic ice was drastically melted away. 40% about during my career. Extremely fast. Having been part of the oil development, I decided that that's the end of it for us. We decided to get rid of all consumption of burning oil. We, we haven't really suffered. Actually, our quality of life has changed much better because of that. Arno and Linda Koinen are two of the most eco-conscious pioneers that I have ever worked with. Arno and Linda were the very first people to use the Canadian innovation into a carbon neutral building product known as Just Biofiber. It was a big risk to be the first one to use the biofiber because nobody had used it anywhere. But Arno's used to doing things that have never been done before. We wanted to lead by example rather than just talking about things and create this harmless home. Uh, when Arno first uh, approached me about this project, uh, we came up here for a site visit and I was blown away with the, the beauty of the, the land and what you can see for your views. And then when he showed me Jack's drawings and what we could do with the drawings and what his visualization was, it was pretty much in step with what I thought you could see and do on this lot. When we had Jack Anderson designed a home for us, he brought to my awareness the biofiber. And these blocks caught the attention because they, they outperformed every other exterior wall alternative that we saw. Very unique to the Just Biofiber construction is, is that the building itself becomes carbon negative. We have an exceptional amount of carbon dioxide that is absorbed into the industrial hemp plant during its growth and we build from the industrial hemp plant. But once it's actually created into a block, the process doesn't stop. Carbon dioxide is absorbed into the lime that's within the block and actually makes the building stronger over time. We emit a lot of CO2 with concrete. This project here, Arnold's house, uh, captures approximately 30 tons of CO2 that we pull out of the air and we are carbon negative in place whereas conventional construction is carbon positive uh, by a large margin. There's a better way to build because 35% of construction waste ends up in that landfill. This building process costs less because it uses less embodied energy to manufacture the product whereas steel and concrete requires a great amount of heat and energy in order to create it. This is a natural product comes from the field and we use a cold process to make it. The lifespan of concrete is approximately 65 years of upgrade. What happens there is the concrete dehydrates so there's no water left in it and so when it has no water it has no flexural strength and so once it cracks that's the end of the life of concrete and so we use a lime stucco that goes right onto the blocks and gives us a molecular bond and therefore there's no shrinking or cracking. Lime does not shrink when it dries. The reason being because it takes CO2 to cure it. This here you can kick you know, a thousand times and it'll never crack. Come on, kick it. The goal on the plant right now is to become carbon neutral. So the hemp absorbs so much CO2 and then after we put it in place and build, it takes a hundred years for it to reach its full maturity and that's how long it absorbs CO2 for. Lime does not set up with heat, like concrete or, or additives. It only sets up from absorbing CO2. It starts at the farmers. For agricultural diversification, the hemp plant is a great rotational crop because it puts CO2 into the ground. 
The very nature of the building product is, is that we are using organic compounds uh, throughout. So there's virtually no toxins within the construction of this building. Compared to conventional houses, the toxicity uh, within this residence would be just a fraction of what we would see in conventional houses of similar scale. When we had chose the finishes for the house, we wanted to choose the ones which are least toxic. That mostly it's avoiding uh, formaldehyde or any emissions from the paints, for example. We achieved the best result by having solid wood floor, not engineered, and using no particle board, any part of the house, kitchen cabinetry, any foundation parts, or anything. We have measurement sensors on the wall, inside and outside, to measure the heat flow for the R value, as well as the humidity through the wall. The blocks breathe, so this way you have no mold or no mildew, that kind of stuff trapped inside your house. That's what vapor barriers do, is they trap all the moisture. It has no off-gassing after. And so you're living in, instead of VOCs, like styrofoam, um, we have no VOCs. Um, we are proven by the green build, as food grade material. Very important to recognize that the construction of it allows us to minimize other components of the construction, such as vapor barriers. When we make the frames, um, molecules you can't separate, but once they're put together you can deform. And so we use 350 tons of pressure when we make each frame. And by doing that we create a thermal set. So it never go back to its natural state again. It stays in this frozen state forever. The frames that are built inside the blocks to make them load bearing and structural, when we take and put a point load on here, it spreads it out every block so it comes down this way to the foundation. So therefore, there's no pilings required in commercial or industrial buildings or residential. We just do spread footings, so we save about 45 to 50 percent of the concrete that would be normally put into an actual building. Whereas you might spend a little bit in your initial capital cost at the outset, your monthly utility bills are virtually non-existent because we don't have to worry about paying excessive amounts for water and hydro and the other utilities that most residents have to deal with. We have a spectacular solar exposure on this building site and so from the initial outset of this design, we intended to have a significant roof area for photovoltaic collection. If you are collecting uh, uh, sunlight and then converting it to electricity, we can feed it back to the grid as many do, or in an isolated rural environment like this, we want to put in a Tesla battery system. So we have the ability to capture that electricity and then to be able to use it. Behind the garage, there is an electric system behind us, digital panels, solar, Tesla power walls, and the main electric system. Unique to our situation today is, is we have a very windy day, BC Hydro is out and yet we are sitting here with all the electricity that we need to be able to uh, recognize the value of what this home represents. We are off the grid and we are in power walls. We've come to discover that electromagnetic frequencies are very restricted within here, which makes it a healthier home to live within as well. We wanted to make sure to get minimum electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation meter actually showed that we have practically none of that in our bedroom. And the rest of the house is very low as well. The thick blocks with the wires going in the middle of that already minimizes that. We are sitting high on a rock mountain and so the ability to get well water was recognized from the outset as being very limited. 
And so we explored rainwater harvesting at the outset. So the plan was is to collect the rainwater from the roof, collect it in cisterns, use it to complement the well water that would be available. And then we go through various filtration systems as to whether we want to bring it in as uh, to meet Canadian drinking water standards or whether it's come in unfiltered and serves as irrigation within the passive solar sun space. So we have two rainwater collection systems. This one goes to this tank that's in the water treatment room. Here, this is the water treatment room where we have a rainwater tank down at the bottom and we have a whole water treatment system here along the wall. It can take rainwater and it can take well water and we can treat those as we choose. We try to minimize the amount of effluent that leaves this residence as well. And when we are perched on a rock, we had to go into a, an innovative level two package treatment plant for the sewage. We had three tanks, the main septic tank, the second which is bacteria eliminating, and then the third tank which sends actually practically clean water to the nature, the septic field which is down below in the greens. Arno and I did 1,083 emails during this build because he's right on top of it. If there was a question or a concern or looking forward where we should be the next stage in the, in the process, um, and super helpful. This is where we put the very first JBF block. This is where it all started. I love what you did with the anchors when we did this little pad back here. We can make biofiber blocks. We can make any shape that we want. On this drawing here, this is a greenhouse here. And so we can make round corners as well that have structural integrity. This is the view to our greenhouse room. Very unique to this particular design was is the opportunity to incorporate a passive solar sun space. The passive solar sun space gives us heating options for the residents, but it also gives us growing options. Sun spaces also give us the ability to start our gardens early in February so that we have good starters and when the last frost is hit in March, we can now slide out plants that have already been started. So there's great potential for food production within any passive solar sun space in a residence. This is a deep pit which gets filled with soil and can grow tropical fruits, etc., tomatoes, etc. The rest of the room can be equipped or will be equipped to grow food. Resilience is the importance of us to be able to maintain a home in all types of shock and crisis situations. The nature of the fact that we have a metal roof and we have just biofiber walls means that basically this building would not burn. If we had wildfires run through this area, this building is likely to be fully standing without any consequences. The lime absorbs CO2. What's in your fire extinguisher is CO2, carbon dioxide. This torch will heat up to 2200 degrees. And when this gets red hot, cherry red, that's melting the steel. So if you had a fire in your house, you close the door, the CO2 will put it out within a minute to two minutes because it off gas the CO2. On the outside, there's no thermal transfer around it. So you can run your hands around there if you put your hand over top here right now, you'll feel that that's about 1800 degrees. And there's zero thermal transfer through to the other side whatsoever, it's at room temperature. So there's no flame spread, and we have a ULC number that says that, that we are combustion proof. Seeing the blocks are all glued together so that it's 100% monolithic. And monolithic is the strongest that we know of in engineering for construction. This will take 9.2 on the Richter scale, and that's what it's been tested for. So for hurricanes, stuff like that, it'll take a, a wind pressure on a house with a 10-foot wall, probably 500 miles per hour. And this here also absorbs 79 dBs of sound. And so if there's people in another room or whatever, you'd never hear them. Uh, a train produces 85 dBs at 110 kilometers an hour. Lime is the only self-healing material that we have on the planet. So when lime cracks, water gets in there and decalcifies it, and then recalcifies it, so it's self-healing. 
hemp lime have stood together in the Great Wall of China and the pyramids, we know that this building will be here and could have a lifespan of 500 years. By this being our first build proves that we can build anything. We can stop global climate change and this will reverse global climate change because of the amount of CO2 that we absorb from the atmosphere. As a builder, would I use JBF block again? Yes, absolutely. I think it's the way of the future or one of the ways of the future. I would build a house in all JBF without question. When my father warned about climate crisis, I wasn't ready to listen to that at all. It looked to me like the homes have a pretty short life on this earth and unsafe because they use lots of toxic materials. That is what drove us to build an eco-home.